So after I got my goo result from not drying the ethyl acetate poles, I try to dry uh, I try to salt out with the IPA that I made from I tried to dry a 70% isopropanol, but at the end it was still a bit wet, it had water in it, so it still ended with a goo. So I purchased some 99% isopropanol, and the difference is quite noticeable. You can see that it salts. And I still had a very low yield and it came out it came out to around uh, 0.9% citrate so that's even lower I think it's around 60% what uh, hydrochloride is the salt so for the next time I do this test for checking if my idea is correct I'll try using a larger starting material larger mass so that it'll be easier to weigh and everything and just us uh, more note notations for some ideas that I had on the project itself that I did the control that I used had near zero salting despite using the same material as I did for the ethylene experiment and on DMT Nexus forum someone mentioned 1 M MCP it's a it's a chemical that you apply on fruits so that the ethylene isn't produced and has a longer shelf life. The and he mentioned he asked me if I thought it would uh, limit the production of mescaline since I tested if ethylene increases the biosynthesis. So in theory, I do think that is the fact that anything that reduces the ethylene production would reduce the biosynthesis of the alkaloids in the cactus but that got me to thinking about other things and other ideas that I had about increasing the biosynthesis and I remembered that the the seedlings that I used in my experiment, the control and the ethylene, they were both exposed to GA3, the elongating growth hormone. And that's an antagonist to ethylene. GA3 counteracts all the effects of ethylene. So it's a good possibility that GA3 also inhibited the biosynthesis of the alkaloid in question. So I think that the GA3 is what kept the control at barely registering any alkaloids. And in the future, I'll try to prevent that from happening. I'll, I'll use a longer duration between the final application of GA3 which was a separate experiment and anything related to the alkaloid content. So hopefully the J3 doesn't affect my my bricks level testing. I I applied J3 to all of my trichoceras as a part of a different experiment and the two seedlings from the BRICS experiment were also used in the application of the J3. So it's been two weeks after the application, approximately. 
maybe a little longer, but it's, it was around two weeks. And I have no idea on the turnaround rate of the effects on GA3 and the biosynthesis of the alkaloids. But in any case, it was two weeks in a drought period after the application at a minimum, maybe a bit more. So hopefully there won't be a big effect on testing the difference between the two. But in any case, they were both applied at the same concentration. So if there is an effect, it should apply to them equally. But in the future, I won't be using any more GA3 on the Trichocerus. So hopefully any effect that I had for future testing of my increasing biosynthesis to the genetic potential, it will not be a factor anymore. But if anyone wants to test that out, that's actually a pretty good experiment. You apply J3 to one of them, the concentration would have to come off your idea, and a control with no J3 and see if the J3 reduces the amount of mescaline or other alkaloids in your plant. But again, the results from my first experiment since it wasn't the best extraction technique and I had a few errors. Uh, I'm going to ignore the results, but indeed there was a big difference between the control and the ethylene, but the concentration and any weight should be ignored since it's not reliable and there's probably some, zooming in, there's probably some salt contamination as well.